worship the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands if you come to worship Him. If you know that He's great on this morning, come on, lift your voice. Lift your hands and worship Him. Because He's worthy to be great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord, Shiloh. Good morning. Welcome to Shiloh Cyber Sanctuary to all of our uh, Shiloh Nation uh, viewers, to all of those visitors, first timers. We thank you certainly indeed for sharing with us on this morning in worship. To God be the glory. If you would really quickly turn with me to the gospel according to Luke gospel according to luke as we are in the season of advent celebrating the coming of the christ the birth of the lord jesus christ hallelujah what a time and season certainly to not only find hope but to also celebrate god for sending us jesus the christ luke chapter one luke chapter one beginning at verse 31 luke chapter one beginning at verse 31 very familiar bit of scripture Luke 1 31 New International Translation reads thusly you will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the most high the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever his kingdom will never end how will this be Mary asked the angel since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to, the, to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Verse 46, and Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. 
Amen. <clears throat> you will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be, be born will be called the Son of God. Blessed is the reading of God's Holy Word. I want to share with you this morning, really quickly in the celebration of the prophecy fulfilled, the Lord Jesus Christ being sent to all of us that we might rejoice and be glad. I want to preach and teach and have conversation with each and every one of you who are viewing with us on today from this simple phrase, chosen. I want you to let somebody know I'm chosen, chosen. Let, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you first and foremost for being God and God all by God's self. God, we thank you for this privileged opportunity to not only view and to share and worship online, but God, we thank you that we are participating in the gift called life. Thank you, God, for blessing us with life today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your unmerited favor. Thank you for how you, your continued countenance, your presence, and your power working for and to and through each and every one of us. God, I ask even right now that we would hear a word straight from you. God, send the word that would accomplish what you so desired and that it will not return to you void. We thank you in advance for what we're about to receive. What I'm really asking, God, is that not only would you heal or deliver the hearers and the doers of this word, but God, would you save somebody today? Draw somebody into that relationship you so desire to have with each and every one of us. God, let salvation reign forth and be, be, be delivered and sent and received even today. God, we thank you for how the Lord Jesus Christ was given to us that we might have that relationship with you. And so I pray that happens today, even through this message, God, save someone, heal someone and deliver all in the mighty matchless name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we all said, amen. Chosen, chosen. Beloved, one of the many lessons that I've come to grips with while growing in Christ is embracing the fact that God's selection of us for his purposes is subject to his own will and counsel. That is to say that you cannot be too good for God to use you. But those of us who are guilty of sin, you cannot be too bad for God to use you. God's choice is by God's own counsel. It is not by your sin. It is not by your goodness. It is not by your education. It is not by your pedigree. It is not by your church affiliation. It is not by your denomination. It is not by how many languages you can speak or and how many scriptures you can quote. God chooses by his own counsel. In fact, his selection of who would be the vehicle for introduction or for the introduction of his son emphasizes to us that God's choice in selection is a matter of grace. Oh, yeah. Who God chooses, who God selects isn't a matter of anything else but a matter of grace. God chooses a young girl by the name of Mary who is a resident of Nazareth. Those two pieces of information present to us some profound information about the choices of God. The Bible says her name is Mary and she's from Nazareth. Nazareth, historically, my sisters and brothers, is considered to be an infamous place. It is not a place where people go and choose to do good things. As a matter of fact, John chapter 1 verse 46 says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yet God chooses a woman who is a resident of Nazareth. Nazareth is, in its etymology means the place of germs. God chooses a woman who is from a germicidal place, a place that is not reputable, and chooses her to be a conduit 
to be the vehicle by which he would place, displace, and put in her his only begotten son. Check it, church. God puts his best gift in the worst package. Yeah, she, she's from a nasty place. She, she is not one of a reputable woman because she is from Nazareth. Yet God chooses a woman that is not from a good place to carry the best gift. Since you missed that, her name is Mary. In its etymological study, it means bitterness. I found out that it is in the same word that is in the family of Miriam, Marion, and Moriah. Those words, all in synonym type of form, all mean bitterness. What am I trying to say? God chooses a bitter woman from a bad place to carry the best gift. He, he chooses a woman who's bitter and she's got a man. She, she's engaged to be married, which suggests to us that a relationship is not definitive of your mood. Your, your relationship with God defines your mood. Her name means bitter, but she's with a man. The text says she's espoused to Joseph, which means she's engaged to be married. God chooses a bitter woman from a bad place to put in her the best gift. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but that's a word for somebody here today. I, I don't know who it is, but 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 in the grace of God, God can put the best gifts in the worst packages. In other words, don't judge me by the outside cover. Don't make an assessment of me based on the externals. Don't come to a conclusion based upon the cover of the book because the cover of the book is not the revelation that you need to understand. Don't cast sentence on me by how I look, how I dress, or how I talk because I could be the worst person in the world according to your perception, but according to God's grace, I'm good enough for him to call and to use for his purposes. And that's good news for all of us today. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care where you're from. You are not too bad for God to use. He can put the best gifts in the worst packages. Can I talk to the people who aren't watching like this acting like I'm I'm not talking to them. Can, can we have real talk real quick? Can I talk to folk who understand you haven't gotten it all right yet? Can, can I talk to the folk who know they've missed messed up some things with God and despite your of your mess ups, he still blesses you. He still used you. He still called you. There's still anointing on you. I, I'm not talking to the perfect people, the spiritual elitists who act like they've never done anything wrong. I'm talking to those who all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm talking to the people who woke up one day realizing that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Where are the folk who know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, uh, you would have been gone a long time time ago. God will still use you even though you are not a preferred package. He puts the best gift in the worst packages. She, she's a bitter woman, but God calls her because it's her assignment. But here's the relevant question of the text, Shiloh. Why would God risk rejection of his gift by putting it in an unpreferred package? Come on, if the truth be told, you and I already know that you are not inclined to take a gift that doesn't come looking good. Come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. Most of us are more inclined to reject a gift that comes in a bad package. So why would God risk the rejection of the this gift by putting it in such a bad package? Here it is. God wants at the end of the day that the attention not be given to the package, but the attention be given to the gift. So God will not use folk who won't try to take his glory. 
glory. Instead, God will use people who could care less about their names getting called or their titles and position being emphasized. He'll use people who care more about him getting the glory rather than them getting the glory. He will not use people who always want their names up in lights, the ones who are only woke when the spotlight is on them, but they're never attentive when the light is on someone else. He will use somebody who will declare that the Lord Jesus the Christ is the Lord and that he alone gets all the glory in the praise. Somebody all type right there, not my name, but his name. Yeah, not my name, but his name. It's his name that deserves all the glory in the praise. In, in, in recently reading this text, y'all, I discovered that God puts good gifts in bad packages. Watch this to preserve the glory of the gift. Preach cheeks. I'm trying. In other words, God makes sure that the glory is reserved for the gift and not the package, which is inferred that the package isn't always attractive because if the gift it, it, because it's the gift that gets all the glory. He he uses Mary because she's humble, even though she's not perfect. Mary's not wonderful in her own right. She's humble, even though she's not perfect. But the angel shows up and says, listen, you are blessed among women. God is with you. God is calling you and has chosen you to be a vessel through which Jesus the Christ would come. God chose you. In the middle of the conversation, the angel says, hey, your cousin Elizabeth is with child. Why would he mention her cousin Beth? at this particular point in the passage. Why? Why didn't he lead in with this news about Beth first? Then it dawned on me, watch this. Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the one who made way for Jesus Christ. Mary is carrying Jesus and Elizabeth is carrying John. So why did Mary go to Beth's house? Mary went to be with Elizabeth because when you're chosen, you've got to connect with those who comprehend it. Yeah, she, she, see, when you realize you're chosen, you've got to be careful with who you connect with and not allow yourself to be in partnership with folk who are intimidated by greatness. Oh, yeah. You see, look, Elizabeth had gone through an ordeal of barrenness before becoming pregnant. And although Mary became pregnant quicker than Elizabeth, Elizabeth was never intimidated by Mary's pregnancy because one was carrying the forerunner and the other was carrying the Messiah. You missed the place to shout. These women are not just pregnant with great children. They're pregnant with great causes. One has the forerunner and the other has the Messiah. And they've got to hook up together because they're both pregnant with great causes. Can I give you a little FYI? Lean in a little bit. You will never fly with eagles as long as you keep running with turkeys. Yeah, you're going to have to find somebody that already has purpose on their life already got greatness on their life and stop running with turkey turkey so you can fly with eagles you, you've got to connect with somebody that's got greatness on the inside of them they aren't tripping about this greatness on the inside of you as a matter of fact they don't hate they celebrate they, they know how to shout over what you're carrying because the greatness on the inside of you is just like the greatness they're carrying to. You've got to be able to connect with folk who comprehend it. Watch this, y'all. When she shows up to Elizabeth's house in verse 42, she says, blessed are you among women, which is the same thing Gabriel said to her in verse 28. In the King James Version, Elizabeth says what Gabriel said verbatim. She was not in the original conversation with Gabriel, but she says the same thing. Mary goes to Elizabeth's house, Elizabeth's house and hears the same thing that Gabriel said. It's been six months, y'all, for Elizabeth, but it's only a few days for Mary. But when she gets in Elizabeth's presence, she says, you're chosen. Blessed are you among women. That's because when you're chosen, 
you'll keep company with those who can confirm it. Yeah, when you're when you're chosen, you'll keep company with those who can confirm it. In essence, Elizabeth says you're carrying greatness, but you're not even showing yet. Some years ago, y'all should never forget. My wife and I were having dinner with a sister cousin and our sister cousin saw one of her neighbors who happened to have time to sit and come chit chat with us. Long story short, she and my wife made a connection immediately. I love how my wife never meets a stranger. Something happened, y'all, during this conversation conversation that they were having they there where the new dinner guests started to tear up my wife asked if you saw that uh she said hey but did you see that uh i said no i missed it but what i didn't miss was the fact that the tears uh were a result of her company who took time to confirm a work that god clearly called her to and somebody here today needs to get around some company who can see something in you before other folk do you, you aren't even showing yet but there are some folk around you who can see what you're carrying before it starts showing preach cheeks i'm trying so, so send a message to somebody even right there tell them i see some great things coming out of you I see some great things coming out of you. It, it isn't even showing yet, but I see it in the spirit. You're not going to be where you always are, but but I, I see greatness on your life. Can I tell y'all something? Y'all mind if I say this really quickly? When God chooses to use your life, you'll have haters and you'll have conformers. You'll have haters and you'll have confirmers. Yeah, listen, folk who comprehend being chosen know how to confirm firm it in you because they are not haters in their own spirit. When you're selected by God, you've got to learn that not only does it produce people who can handle it, it will also produce people who will confirm it. You just have to learn how to choose your company. Come on, PC. You've got to find somebody who's got an assignment on their lives just like you've got an assignment on yours. But wait a minute. Not only do you need to find great company who can confirm you, but you also need to connect with someone who has something in common. Yeah, both Mary and Elizabeth have significant others in their lives who don't understand what God is doing and they're both being rejected. Y'all mind if we act like this is a Wednesday night? I love Wednesdays, y'all. Mary's fiance, Joseph, is Joseph. He is contemplating divorcing her because she shows up pregnant and it isn't his. Oh, come on, y'all acting like you wouldn't have a problem with that. It, if, if this was one of y'all, I'm sure or this is one of y'all's fiance, y'all be tripping. Y'all be tripping. Y'all be calling me for counseling. Y'all, yeah, I, I know for sure y'all have problems. Joseph is trying to divorce Mary while Zachariah doesn't believe what's going on. And God strikes him mute. Both of these women have people who are in their lives who don't understand the greatness that is in them, but they don't allow the frustration or of the significant others to stop them from walking in the favor and in the grace that's on their lives. If you got greatness in your life, everybody's not going to understand you. If you got greatness in your life, everybody's not going to like you. If you got greatness on your life, everybody's not going to approve you. But you've got to learn how to walk in God's favor. As a matter of fact, tell somebody, I don't have time for you to be sweating me. I've got to deal with what's what with what's on the inside of me because what's on the inside of me is consuming my life. Okay, I'm done. Thank you all for chilling with me today. But watch what Mary does next. Mary says, listen, my husband is struggling with this. I've got one confirmer and one in conflict. But but I tell you what I'm going to do because I got a word of confirmation. I'm going to start my celebration off of revelation, even though I don't have manifestation. Yeah, Mary said in verse 
46, my soul does magnify the Lord. When you're chosen, not only should you connect with great people, keep company with those who can confirm you, connect with those who have something in common, but you should also learn how to counsel what could have caused you to quit. Yeah, counsel what could have caused you to quit. What could have caused Mary to quit? I'm so glad you asked because Mary and Joseph, because during Mary and Joseph's day, society was programmed to reject such a person, person found in their predicament. She would have been an outcast in a castaway or literally in exile. If it wasn't the pressure from her husband who wanted to divorce her quietly and not expose her publicly, she could have worried herself into depression, despair, and despondency because she was with child and it wasn't her husband's. But she didn't give up. She could have, she could have agreed with the lie that there was no other option except to end it or to terminate it. But she didn't. She did not quit. Mary canceled what could have caused her to quit. How, Reverend? How did she cancel what could have caused her to quit? Well, remember I told you she got a word of confirmation and decided to start her celebration off of revelation, even though she did not have manifestation, Mary started to celebrate, but it wasn't time yet. Mary still had nine months before the manifestation, but she was not going to wait nine months to come from her uh, to thank him. Yes, yeah, she was not going to wait for nine months of, a, of the baby to come in order for her to thank God. She was going going to start giving God the glory right now. Why? Because revelation is enough to praise God. If you receive a word, if you receive revelation, revelation is enough for you that you can give God praise right now. You don't have to wait until God does it. You don't have to wait until God delivers it. You don't have to wait until God gets it done. You can give God praise right right now. Like Mary, you can tell your soul, soul, you ought to praise God. Soul, you ought to magnify God. Soul, you ought to glorify God because I heard from God and the revelation is there. I don't have to wait for the manifestation. Therefore, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Somebody ought to give God praise like your soul magnifies the Lord. Oh, come on. If you're chosen, and you ought to praise God. If God's hand is on your life, you ought to praise God. If God has inserted greatness in you, on you, and using it through you, you ought to praise God. When God chooses you to fulfill an assignment in this world, he will send those in your life who comprehend it, confirm it, something is going to be in common to it, and he will also help you to know and give you what you stand in need of that you won't cancel it. Thank you, God, for choosing me. I think somebody ought to post that right there. Somebody ought to holler that right there in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you're viewing here today. God has chosen me. He chose me. Thank you, Jesus. Regardless of what I've gone through, regardless of all of what we've been through, these 12 months God still chooses me I know I may not make do everything right I know I have some missteps and made some mistakes but God still calls me God still has intended purposes and intentional plans for my life and he will still get the glory in and through me I may not be the best gift or excuse me the best package but I'm gonna do my best to Garrett to carry this gift I may not be a preferred package but I know God has inserted the best gift in me and he will get the glory through me. God bless you. Hallelujah. There may be somebody watching today that all your life you felt rejected, dejected. You felt left out, cast out, uh, and left astray. And so God is calling you today and letting you know that you have never been long, uh, all by yourself. You have never, you have never been cast out 
left out and pushed away from him. He is drawing you in now. He's always been with you, watching over you and making ways for you. And right now, he's just calling you into a relationship with him. And I want to extend that invitation to somebody today that you might receive God the Father by way of Jesus Christ. I offer this invitation to Christian discipleship. To walk as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ all starts with receiving him. To believe that he is Lord and that God raised him from the grave. All of us have come this way. Nobody's perfect. No, no, we're not all claiming to be perfect. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody's perfect. We all recognize and understand that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We all recognize that while we were yet sinning, God demonstrated his love for us in this, that he sent his son to die for us. So the first invitation is simply to believe he's Lord. The second invitation is simply to understand uh, that he died for us. He died for us and he he's the substitutionary sacrifice he died the death you should have died if you believe that you move on to the third invitation the third invitation the third third, third portion of this invitation rather is simply to believe that he has risen from the grave with all power in his hand he 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 is Lord he died the death you should have died and he's risen from the grave he's alive if you believe those three things, you will receive the invitation I'm extending to you just to receive salvation, to have the right relationship that God so desires and pursues a real love relationship that's real and personal. It's yours today. If you receive Jesus, just go ahead and visit the web address that is on the screen right there and let us know who you are. Let us know what the Lord has done in your life. And not only share with us that you receive salvation, but unite with the ministries of Shiloh Baptist Church, Odrick's Corner, McLean, Virginia. And let us know that the Lord is moving and working in your life. Become a virtual member of Shiloh Baptist Church. More importantly, become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's celebrate those who have made decisions. Hallelujah. Ever since this pandemic started or ever since we started uh, extending the net, uh, casting the net for virtual members, God has sent persons our way and has entrusted them to us in the ministries of Shalom. We are indeed grateful. And so there are others, if there are others here today viewing us, the Lord is calling you. Just receive him. Just say yes. Yes, Lord. And meet us on our website we will be in contact with you as soon as we receive your information as you fill out that form at this web address here on the screen receive the lord jesus christ hallelujah and walk in that rightful place as a disciple of the lord jesus christ in partner with the ministries of shallow as we are advancing the kingdom of god by making disciples of jesus christ and we welcome you God bless you. Love each and every one of you. Shiloh, miss you dearly. My wife and I and son, well, we miss each and everybody. I'm sure y'all do too. Uh, but let's keep on pressing as best we possibly can. And we will look for other opportunities uh, through technology that we can gather and fellowship and just simply lay eyes on one another and love on one another, uh, particularly during this season of Christmas and in celebration of the prophecy fulfilled, the sending and the coming of the baby Jesus the Christ. Thank you, God, for sending the best gift and by sending it to what may not necessarily have been the preferred package. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing Mary. Thank you, God, for choosing us. Hallelujah. I pray you have a blessed rest of the day. Um, uh, be, be, certainly, I want to make you mindful of all the activities that are happening. Uh, make sure you go back and look at the flyers or the ads, the various activities that we're doing through the church and participate. Connect with somebody through those opportunities that we are offering to you that you can continue to be connected with your church, uh, with your fellow church family. So thank you in advance for participating uh, in all the other activities that are happening weekly or monthly. God bless you to all of our servant leaders who serve faithfully and have done such throughout this entire year. God bless each and every one of you. And again, we love you. We miss you. Have a blessed day. 
May the Lord watch over you and keep you and grant you his peace. Hallelujah. God bless you. Love you.